Welcome back to another video. I thought I'd do something a bit different today. Uh, look at a motherboard. It's a Gigabyte AB350M Gaming 3. And this is a micro ATX board for a new build that I'm working on. It's a work in progress. The reason I picked this board was because you have a couple of features which are useful. One of which is the hybrid fan header so it supports PWM and the uh, voltage control and you also have USB 3 generation 2 which is twice as fast as the previous USB 3.1 generation 1. A uh, quick look at some of the specs now I will list these out in the product description if you're interested so pay attention to that you get the usual snazzy pictures on the back of the box this is a B350 board, so it's kind of mid-level. It's described as performance. The A320 would be the cheapest board, and the enthusiast goes up to the X370. There will be new boards coming out for the AM4 platform, so it might mean you might get a better deal on boards such as this. Honestly, wouldn't worry too much about new boards coming out. That happens all the time anyway. So we're just going to go through, give you an overview. This isn't really a review. It's just to show you what you get included just to give you an idea of the board and some of the features that it might have and to just physically see it. This is port, supports single graphics cards only. So you see the two full size slots. The bottom one is not the full speed. So you want to use the top slot for the graphics card. You can't run uh, dual cards on this with SLI or Crossfire. So make sure that's something which isn't important, important for you. There's the NVMe port there. You can fit a SATA drive to that as well or you can use Bluetooth Wi-Fi modules on the left you have the audio chip with the capacitors and there's a trace that goes through that as well that lights up and your bottom connectors a lot of them you're not going to use uh, except the front panel audio the front USB 2 and you'll see the USB 3 there those are the main ones that you're going to use apart from obviously the front panel connectors which you'll see there on the right the white you also have the uh, one of the fan headers there again that supports PWM and voltage control and you also have clear SMOS with the two pins sticking up now the heatsink on this isn't that big but the chipset's pretty new relatively modern so it's not going to generate a ton of heat they're much more energy efficient despite the fact that the B350 supports um, four SATA ports the maker has put six so you can use those six but it depends on what you're using with the NVMe port as well there's your power input 24 pin now all of these boards are solid capacitors and has been for some time um, they're generally longer lasting and it supports up to 64 gigabytes of RAM although it would be quite costly to do that there's your fan header at the top for the CPU fan there's your AM4 socket it's a 4 plus 3 phase design with the power on this and there's your CPU power input and there's also another system fan. So you have two system fans and a CPU. There's a quick shot of the heatsink. Again, it's just a thermal pad on this, not a particularly huge heatsink. Um, it's more for aesthetics, but it will help a little bit with cooling. And a quick shot on the back. Uh, back plate is uh, pre-attached as it should do on all of these boards. So make sure you have access to that if you're not going to fit the cooler um, processor and cooler onto the board directly if you put it in the case. So just make sure on that one. Now as far as the connectors go, USB 2, PS2, we all have the DVI-D, HDMI and the VGA. You'll see the blue ports are the USB generation uh, 3.1 Gen 1 and the red is the faster Gen 2. There's your Ethernet port as well. And notice that you have three of the audio ports if you have multi-channel sound you'll have to use the front panel connectors to get the you know 5.1 or 7.1 quick look at some of the other items that are included if you don't read manuals and you've never made a pc before i strongly recommend you do read the manual because it is quite useful it tells you everything that you need to know it's actually quite straightforward and simple but it is important to read this if you haven't built a pc before now this will show you the limitation with the um, m.2 connector depending on which um, what you've put in there or if you've not put anything in there it might limit your SATA ports down to four that's just a limitation of the chipset personally I find that there's enough SATA ports here even if you're using that and this will cover the BIOS if there's any interest in the BIOS I might do a separate video on that when I've got it up and running so let me know on that side of things and here's your CD would suggest downloading the more recent software if you can and a very basic guide quick start on um, how to fit it. You also get a little sticker included 
and there is the IO shield. They've improved a bit in quality, they're a bit thicker now, more rigid. This is really to just make it easier to see the ports and also to help prevent dust getting in. It has a bit of padding on the back. Definitely better than the last board that I had. A fairly small point. And here are your four SATA cables. You'll notice that um, you get two angled ones and two straight ones, but they have the um, clips that re retention, so that you'd have to push them in to release them. Haven't really had any problems with SATA ports coming out, but that's a, I've seen that on Gigabyte boards before, so it's a, possibly a useful feature. And here you can see, so you have to push down on the tab to release. Handy if you do move a computer around, just on the off chance that they might come out. So fitting this, pretty straightforward. I'm just going to show you briefly. Put the standoffs or risers in. Make sure you use these screws that have the grooved edges on the underside that helps to grip into the solder points. And that's pretty much it. So once I've got this up and running, I'll give you an overview of what I think of the board, any potential issues. You don't get a speaker on the board, but you usually get that with the case. And here's the front power connectors. I would strongly suggest, uh, having built PCs over the years, not to go in and buy a really expensive board unless you are going to use those features. You could spend 150, 200 pounds on a board, but have a look and see what you're going to use with the particular features that you need. This one is quite well featured, particularly with the USB 3.1 Generation 2. A lot of the boards that I looked at at this price didn't have that, so that's something which was quite useful to me. If there's any interest in future videos on this board or related items, then uh, do let me know in the comments section. Also, let me know what you think of this board if you've got it. I obviously haven't got the system up and running yet, so I can't really give you a full opinion on it at the moment. Um, and thanks very much for watching. I hope it was useful to you, and I'll catch up with you in the next video.